Good evening and welcome to Calais. In prospect, an excellent fight for the vacant European Bantamweight Championship. The Frenchman Thierry Jacob in his hometown of Calais and with huge support among this 15,000 crowd up against Britain's former world flyweight champion, Duke McKenzie, who's now 27. McKenzie then against Jacob for the title vacated by the Italian Vincenzo Belcastro. Now there is Duke McKenzie looking to carve out a new career at bantamweight. And here's Jacob, the 25-year-old Frenchman. Big advantage for him being here in his hometown of Calais. A record of 33 wins and three defeats for Jacob, who's had a couple of world title failures in the past. So he, too, is looking to get his career back on the rails at the very top level. Both of the fighters in a kind of similar vein as far as that's concerned. Jacob formerly regarded as a red-hot prospect but hasn't been able to claim one of the, what is it, now four versions of the world title available. And there's McKenzie who lost his flyweight crown to Dave McCauley a couple of years ago. Away they go then, 12 rounds of boxing for the European bantamweight crown at eight stone, six pounds. McKenzie trying that right early on there and he's a neat boxer, Duke McKenzie, the one in the green shorts, just to remind you. And uh, if you're in any doubt, he's got the word Duke there emblazoned for you right across the waistband. McKenzie's record, 23 wins and one defeat. And about half of those wins have come by knockout. But he's a pretty good technician. Mackenzie, though, had big weight-making problems at flyweight, and that's what I think did for him, really, at the end. He says he's a lot more comfortable up at Bantam. The problem is, of course, has he carried the punch power with him in the move up? Often a problem for the little men. A lot of them punches are missing in this opening round. They neither of them really found their timing so far. Quiet round. Both look very tentative, cautious, just trying to feel the other man out a little. Mackenzie's been consistently out of range with his jab. And he may be suffering from a little bit of ring rust as well because he's been out of the ring since November last year. That is a, a long gap. Too long quite sure of the reason for that either but there have been periods of inactivity in Mackenzie's career right from the word go particularly early on Jacob you can see a south ball leading with the right that's better work for Mackenzie towards the end of the round the first really meaningful action of the whole contest a couple of decent little digs in there from Duke Mackenzie in the green shorts Jacob's on uh, a win streak of seven, but he hasn't really beaten any opponents of too much consequence in that winning streak since his last world title attempt. That was against Jose Sanabria of Venezuela for the super bantamweight title. Cries of come on, Terry, in French, of course, from the Calais supporters. They really sold the tickets here. In this opening round, Jacob hasn't done too much. If anything, Mackenzie just shading it for my money at the moment. That's a good jab from him, too. goes the bell to end the first round two experienced fighters of course they'll know that they've got to pace this so there's Terry Jacob 18 knockouts in his 33 wins he's got the reputation as a man who can both box and trade punches ferociously if the need 
arises. Good amateur he was as well, a silver at the World Amateur Championships in 1983, bearing testimony to that, and four times the French amateur champion. Look back at some of the action from that first round. You can see that Mackenzie not really getting the timing into those shots. That was a reasonable little uppercut in there, but um, not really finding the leverage and the range quite right, if I'm honest. Jacob didn't do too much in that opening round. But uh, you can't underestimate the importance of home advantage in these European title fights. One gone, 11 to go. If it goes the distance, of course. Mackenzie's been a European champion before at flyweight for two and a half years, in fact. He won that title by stopping another world champion in Charlie Magri in five rounds. That was in the end of uh, Magri's career. He was definitely on the downslope then, but it was a good win by Mackenzie on his way to becoming the world champion. He took the title against Rolando Bohol, knocking him out in the 11th round. Everything looked rosy around that time. Defended it once before losing it to McCauley. But this, as they say, is a whole new ball game. Now Jacob's starting to get a little more aggressive in this second round, starting to get home with that south four jab occasionally. Still, Mackenzie struggling really to find the timing for his punches. May, may to miss a lot. Hint of blood around there by the head of Jacob, and I'm wondering where that's coming from exactly. He's either cut there by the head, maybe there's been a clash of heads, they did get very close together with some of the inside work. There's certainly some blood around there somewhere. Which is if it's on the side of the head of Thierry Jacob. Good jab, that, from Jacob. worked quite well behind that southpaw jab and then the heads coming close together and that's opened up a cut and the Frenchmen are not at all happy about that they think that may well have been a butt by Mackenzie but he seems to be quite encouraged by developments and gets him with a couple of decent shots of his own there Mackenzie finding the timing at last and those heads coming perilously close together again there well drama in this second round Jacob cut around the head, he looks to have one cut on the side of his head and one underneath that left eye, and again, those heads. Jacob, you can see him turning away there in the clinch, trying to keep the cut away from Mackenzie's head. That's a good punch again by Jacob. Well, it's already becoming pretty rough, tough and gruelling, and that doesn't look a very pleasant cut. It's by the side of the eye. The blood won't run into the eye, and now Mackenzie gets a warning for dangerous headwork from the referee. So, two more jabs there from Jacob at the end of the round. Quite a dramatic little round. Let's have a look and see if we can see what caused that cut again. There you can see the heads coming together. That's what did it. Those two, oh, and again there. And there's no doubt, I think, that that clash of heads opened up the cut. And there is an argument for saying that it might have been pretty dangerous use of the head by Duke McKenzie. Well, they've done a little bit of patch-up work there. The cut, as you can see, to the side of Jacob's left eye. Nothing too serious at the moment, but he has been cut before in his career. He's had his problems with cuts. Indeed, in his first world title challenge against Calvin Seabrooks, he was cut and stopped in the 10th round. So the corner will be a bit worried about that. Well, it's hotting up now, all right. Third round. 
I gave that second to Jacob. So I've got it one round apiece at the moment. I don't know how you're scoring it at home. Something you might like to do. And again, this time, a little warning for Jacob about watch that headwork. The referee, Signor Siminali, a little bit worried about that. But you can see they kind of lock heads together, almost like the horns there, and then there was a push this time. That was certainly not a punch that caused Jacob to fall backwards. He was pushed across the ring, and you saw the referee, who's having to be pretty busy, have a word with McKenzie this time about that. And there's another cut opening up there now that by the right eye of Jacob well he's having his problems once fighters start to cut in their career it tends to keep on happening because the scar tissue reopens among British boxers one thinks of Alan Minter and Henry Cooper as two who had particular problems with that Blood streaming down by the right eye of Jacob. He's caught by two good headshots as well. These are difficult moments for the Frenchman. And you sense that this Calais crowd, as he's caught by another left there, are beginning to sense it. They know that this is starting to look a bit of an uphill task. Mackenzie, in this round, has done his best work. Some jolting headshots have gone in. Jacob being made to miss, you can see how he's trying to keep that cut away from Mackenzie's head in the clinches. He doesn't want to aggravate it any further. Referee almost taking a punch himself as he se stepped in to separate them there. And again, there's a clash of heads, and this time, Mackenzie is having a point deducted for dangerous head work. Round three, one point deducted, which means that even if he was to win the round, and I think you'd say he was winning it at the moment, it would be scored even. On the official scorecards, he's had a point deducted, Mackenzie. So the referee obviously did feel that he was a bit to blame in the second round. Jacobs is worried, that cut looks worse. Mackenzie getting to work, and he's starting to club in those punches with Jacob on the ropes. Cuts by both eyes of Jacob, but the cut by the side of the right eye is the worst now. Now, Mackenzie's really starting to let go with these punches. Jacob having the occasional success with his southpaw jab. He's missing a lot, Mackenzie, but he certainly did enough, I think, in that round to have won it if he hadn't had that point deducted for dangerous headwork. So a fascinating fight here. Rejoin us in just a moment. Yeah. A fight for the vacant European bantamweight title. This is Thierry Jacob fighting in front of his home crowd in Calais and with cuts around both eyes. Quite a bad one by the right eye. Let's have a look now. I think it was that punch, that left hook from Mackenzie that caused the cut in the third round. And you can see the blood beginning to stream from it right afterwards. Later in the round, Mackenzie having a point deducted for use of the head. But it was certainly a punch, I think, that caused that cut. So, fourth round then. Interesting fight, this one. Mackenzie having certainly the best of that third round apart from the point deduction but it's still close-ish Jacob I think won round two Mackenzie might have just shaded the first so I reckon with that point deduction it might be about even Stephen at the moment three judges scoring at ringside has to be said sometimes 
particularly in these circumstances where one fighter is in his home city, the judging does tend to favour that fighter. Shouldn't, but does. Fact of life. Good uppercut there was inside there by uh, Jacob in that last little exchange. Duke McKenzie, one of those fighters from the Mickey Duff stable. The cut doesn't look any worse. The corner seemed to have done a pretty good job between the rounds on it. Warning about holding inside there for McKenzie. But he will have to watch that use of the head. It's something about the styles of the two fighters. They both tend to sort of bend down on their way in, and the heads do come together a lot. And it's quite hard sometimes to see what's accidental and what might be construed as a deliberate butt. Nice right cross from Jacob. The referee's a busy man in there. Kenzie is certainly working very, very hard as he knows he has to away from home and covering up well there, to be truthful, and getting in with a nice right of his own. Duke McKenzie in the green shorts crowd going wild as Jacob at last has to unleash punches. But if I'm honest, most of those were only into the gloves of McKenzie. One or two getting through. Much better round, though, for the Frenchman and started to try and wrestle back the initiative a little, realising he has that cuts problem. As game and courageous as they come, Jacob. It's OK, says Jacob, let's get on with it. Doesn't want to make much of a fuss. Hard, close fight. European title at stake, and of course it could be the springboard for another world title attempt for the winner. Kind of crossroads fight, really. And Mackenzie punching after the bell there. And he'll have to watch that. Certainly two or three body punches sinking in well after the bell. There's Mickey Duff in the corner nearest the camera. Often has a wise word or two. And then the Jacob corner, still busy at work on that right eye. The cut by the left eye seems to have healed, all right. Again, the head's coming in. There's a nice right cross from Jacob in there, working away inside. But then that left from McKenzie. Uh, there's a bit of uh, water or something spilt in the corner. That's why the, we have the hold up at the start of this round. Referee wants that cleared up, he doesn't want the fighters slipping Denny Mancini in the corner getting a warner from, from Mr. Seminale about that now he's happy on they get with it fifth round, due to go 12 this is a bit of a jinx title for British boxers the last nine to have challenged for this European crown have lost Mackenzie trying to put that right. Doing some good work here at the start of the round. And Jacob coming back though, not letting Mackenzie stay the boss. Low blow, I think, there, and use of the head. Was he? he was worried about the referee. He's been almost as, too bus uh, as busy as the two fighters in there, that referee today. Good work there again from McKenzie, but Jacob coming back, flinging in that left hook of his. And again, that was a good shot. It rocked McKenzie's head back on his shoulders. Took it well. You can see the crowd on their feet, 15,000 of them in there. And I bet there are not much more than 50 Duke McKenzie fans around. One hopes that the crowd will stay good-natured. You might have seen on a fight shown recently on Eurosport a crowd riot in France. 
uh, when Derek Williams challenged Jean Chanet. Well, this is tremendous stuff here in the fifth round. Both of them really letting go with the hooks. And neither prepared to give ground. And that action moving this French crowd to song. Now well, Jacob, good punches from him. Back comes McKenzie with his left hook and then the jab. Now this is good work from Jacob. He's worked so hard in this round. And in these closing stages of the round, he may be doing just enough to steal it on the judges' scorecards. McKenzie having to give ground for the first time in the round. Pouring home the punches, the Frenchman. Crowd on their feet at ringside. Really getting behind him. Terry, Terry, they're chanting. And McKenzie backing off from that exchange. Jacob hounding him across the ring, trying to pull him against those ropes and still letting go with those punches. Good round this for the Frenchman, particularly the last minute of it. That cut certainly no worse by the right eye. That's a good right, oh, by McKenzie this time. Well, it's like the Parc des Princes in there at the moment. McKenzie must feel as if he's a bit like the England rugby team trying to take on France with the Grand Slam at stake or something like that. End of a tremendous round of boxing. And Duke McKenzie, who had to take quite a bit of punishment in the last minute of the round. A relentless barrage of punches from this man, Jacob. So game, so gutsy. Keeping that uh, cut under control. They'll have to watch that it doesn't get much bigger and slip further so that the blood would then start to run in the eye and uh, impair the vision. <laughs> So let's take a look back at this uh, fifth round. What a good round it was. The left hook from Jacob there with his back to the ropes at the moment. He was punching a tremendous rate in this round, really just letting go, non-stop action from Jacob. And it certainly would have been, I would think, enough to take the round on the judges' scorecards. Sixth round then. And uh, something's come loose on the glove of Jacob. Jacob, who started his career with 21 straight wins. He was being groomed for big things, but uh, thus far in his career, he's failed the really big tests. This is a grueling fight. Two boxers who desperately want to and need to win. And it's a fair old scrap they're putting up. McKenzie working behind his jab. And Jacob just switching styles for a moment and starting to lead there with the left himself and pumping home the jab from that style. Just trying to confuse McKenzie, perhaps. He's naturally a southpaw, Jacob. You can see he's leading with the left for the moment. That may well be to try and keep that cut further away from McKenzie's jab. Now he's back to Southpaw again, if I'm not mistaken. Now he's leading with the right again, you can see. Quite interesting, bit of switch hitting. But a contest like this really underlining just how well conditioned fighters have to be. Being those heads coming a bit close together, referee having a little cautionary word with McKenzie about that.
Kenzi trying to let go with that right, made to miss, and then being counter-punched. Good work that by the Frenchman. That's a good left two from Jacob. And body punches as well. This is a hard, hard old fight for a vacant title. They both want it so bad. But Mackenzie's been in a cauldron like this before. He went to Italy as a flyweight and retained his title against Giampiero Pina on points. That doesn't happen very often enough away from home. In fact, one of the judges that night, in a classic piece of fence-sitting, scored 12 rounds, all 12 rounds even. Can you believe that? This is a tough one. Coming towards the end of the sixth round, then. Great little fight. Join us again in a moment. Round seven, European bantamweight title fight, Duke McKenzie in the green shorts up against the hometown hero, Thierry Jacob in the black. Close, gruelling fight so far, Jacob with cuts problems. McKenzie, an ex-world champion at flyweight and hoping to become one at bantamweight. But Jacob proving a considerable obstacle to that. Jacob wanting to get back into the world title picture himself. That referee has been very busy throughout. Warnings about use of the head. Low blows holding. There was a kind of a low blow there from Jacob. Still all to play for in this one. It's pretty close. right there from Mackenzie and that blood again beginning to flow by the right eye of Jacob good work there from Mackenzie beginning to time and pick his punches better certainly he looked a bit ring rusty I thought in the first three rounds this is good work by Mackenzie in this seventh Nice right as well by Jacob, though. It's a good little technician, Mackenzie, when he gets his boxing going. Nice stylist. But there's no doubt that Jacob wants a war with him here. Uh, some good work. This is Mackenzie's best little spell, in my view, in the fight. He's really beginning to put his punches together. Jabs, hooks, mixing them up, going to the head most of the time. Starting to box quite well behind the jab, Duke McKenzie. And in this round, Jacob, who's thrown an awful lot of punches in the last couple of rounds, been working so hard, just looking a shade arm-weary, a little bit more tired. Mackenzie bustling up against the ropes. The crowd just gone a little bit more quiet, just a little more worried about their man, I think, in this round. He's had his successes, but Mackenzie's been the boss for my money in this one. Seventh. Closing seconds of it, and uh, no doubt at all on my scorecard, that was Mackenzie's round. There's Jacob's corner, feverish work going on to make sure that that cut doesn't get any worse. Urgent instructions. 
Here we are, the camera taking you right into the corner, almost as if you were working there yourself. And you look at those cuts. They are really having to uh, need all their expertise. The grease on there as well. It's a very, very skilled job to be a boxing cuts man in the corner. You have to be cool and work under pressure and fights can depend on the skill of your work and that is why top fighters are prepared to spend quite a lot of money to get the right kind of men in their corner particularly boxers with a history of cuts so far the corner have managed to keep Jacob in the fight those cuts haven't got too much worse for him but he's got big problems in this fight now because Mackenzie showed signs in the seventh round that he was beginning to take control of it a bit. This is the eighth. Fascinating fight. The Frenchman with the crowd at his back, of course. And they could urge him on. Maybe to almost superhuman efforts, could they? the start of the round you can see that the cuts aren't really visible but once a few jabs and hooks go in from Mackenzie they start to open again in every round that's a good uppercut inside from Mackenzie too left uppercut only landed on the glove though the punch back from Jacob there's not a lot of precision about his work at the moment the Frenchman Mackenzie looks the cooler classier operator at this point He really was uh, fighting up a storm in around the fifth and sixth rounds, Jacob. But he's gone a little bit quiet in these last couple of rounds, and so have the fans as well. Mackenzie always looks much better when he's boxing behind that jab. And digging in those short little hooks to the head as well now. Growing in confidence, visibly. The man from Croydon. Nice, unassuming kind of guy as well, Duke McKenzie. Never been a glamour fighter, even when he was a world champion. But just beginning to take charge here, and that blood beginning to throw quite freely again. The jabs thudding in. These are bad moments for Thierry Jacob. He's falling behind on points, I would say, at this point. Depending, of course, how you scored the earlier rounds. Mackenzie, who made more headlines out of the ring in Britain when there was a train crash near his home and uh, parts of the carriages ended up in his back garden and he had to rescue some of the passengers. That was the uh, famous Pearly train crash, if you remember that. Mackenzie was a bit of a hero that day. He may need to be a hero again here if he's going to win away from home. He's doing well at the moment. Mackenzie in the green shorts. It's another pretty good round for him this eighth. And not too much coming back from Jacob at this point. Those cuts looking fairly gory now around the face. Is the blood flowing into the eye now? I wonder if uh, he's having a little bit of trouble seeing Jacob. Just poured at the cuts once or twice with his gloves. There goes the bell to end the eighth round. And look at that blood, it's flowing rather freely. I'm sorry if uh, you've just been eating a meal or something at home and it's uh, not the most appetizing thing for me to be saying, but uh, it is a fact of life in the boxing ring. Those cuts do heal very, very quickly afterwards. It's, uh, it's nothing to get too worried about. But during the fight, of course, it's a major, major problem. And the cut has got worse. Look, it's gone over the eye there now as well. I think there might be two cuts by that right eye. So it's big problems, really, and he probably is having his vision beginning to be affected by this now. Swellings there as well. He obviously is a fighter with big cuts problems, Jacob, and even if he was to win this one, you wonder how much it might impair him in the future. There's that right uppercut. Wasn't that a good shot by McKenzie? who I think would have taken round seven and eight. Mackenzie, there's a more confident look about him now. He may feel that he's starting to take control of this. Now, this is 
round nine. Jacob Blackshorts, Mackenzie Green. Macon European Bantamweight title. Mackenzie's been around a bit. He's uh, boxed in places like Las Vegas, Reno, Atlantic City. He's been to the States with Mickey Duff in his early career. Been to Italy, as I was telling you. Here he is in France. His record altogether, 20 five wins and one loss he's 27 years of age and just to remind you of Jacob's record 33 wins three defeats and two of those defeats in world title attempts the other one when he was knocked out in nine rounds by Fabrice Benichou in January of 1988 I think there's no doubt about it. At this stage, Jacob is worried about the effects of those cuts. He's trying to keep himself out of danger a little bit. And he's fighting more tentatively as a result of that. Earlier in the fight, he was trading and going to war with Mackenzie. Maybe trying to think he could get the fight over with before the cut stopped him. It's getting quite late in the fight now. It's a championship at stake. They won't stop it for those cuts unless they positively have to because it is too dangerous and a health risk. Doesn't look too bad for him in this ninth round. Quiet around. Mackenzie not quite so dominant as he had been in round seven and eight so far. Mackenzie from a noted fighting family his brother Clinton was a top light welterweight and Dudley, his other brother, was a professional light middleweight. And those cuts again. It's uh, not a very pretty sight, is it? Looks like there might be a bit of a loose bandage around uh, one of Mackenzie's gloves in there, which won't be helping with cuts around either. Referee really ought to stop that and have that seen to. You can see it dangling away there by the right glove of Mackenzie. It's better from Jacob. A couple of decent body shots from him. Now there's not such a good look about Mackenzie's work in this round. He's starting to look a bit ragged. It's a funny old fight. Just when you think one fighter's starting to achieve an ascendancy, Back comes the other, and this is a slightly better round. But look at that right eye. And I think now the referee wants the doctor to have a look at this. Now, is this going to be the end of the fight? The referee will have a close look. The crowd are whistling. They don't want it stopped. He is at home. The doctor's having a word with the referee. What's he going to do? He says, fight on. It's not too bad. It looks pretty bad. And I think if the blood was flowing into the eye, the doctor then would have advised a stoppage. Officially, the doctor can't stop the fight himself, but uh, it would be a very brave referee who ignored a doctor's advice in view of all the arguments about boxing safety that we have these days. So, there it is. Great little fight. Drama still to come, I'm sure. Rejoin us for the closing stages in just a moment or so. Welcome back to Calais. You heard Mickey Duff there in Duke McKenzie's corner saying you can only lose this now if you let him back into the fight. If you're just tuning in, European Bantamweight Championship, three rounds to go as they're reminding Duke McKenzie. Jacob with those big cuts problems and surviving a doctor's inspection in the last round. This is the tenth. The crowd have been silenced by Jacob's problems over the last two or three rounds. And uh, Mackenzie again picking him off at range. Better timing from Mackenzie. He's into the home straight now and he must feel at this point that he 
could have it in the bag if he can just keep this going. I think Mickey Duff's advice in the corner there was just about spot on. Just keep his boxing together, keep this going, not let Jacob back in. So Mackenzie could take the European title here. Though you must remember, when you're fighting away from home, if you want to win on points, you've got to win pretty big. If it's at all closest, it tends to be scored to the home fighter. And still the referee is doing nothing at all about that uh, bandage or whatever it is hanging down off Mackenzie's glove. He really should do something about that, particularly with Jacob having these cuts problems. If that flashes, grazes against one of the cuts, it's going to make it a lot worse. Good jab work there from Mackenzie. Both fighters, you can see, they're bathed in sweat. They're having to dig pretty deep. Vital closing stages of the fight. Got to admire Thierry Jacob. He's showing tremendous physical resilience here, having to fight with a handicap of about four cuts on his head. But the signs are that he needs a big finish, otherwise his title chance could be slipping. See the cut to the side of the head, about three around the eyes as well. Mackenzie completely unmarked. Cuts have never been a problem for him. crowd starting to get behind their man hoping to urge Jacob on to one last despairing effort certainly into the home straight of the fight now that's good work from Jacob better work from him starting to time those punches a bit better and ah, that right crashed into the side of Mackenzie's head now this is Jacob's best work for a while He's starting to let the punches go again, like he was in around the four, fifth, sixth rounds. Better round for the Frenchman. After going through a mini crisis around seven, eight, and nine. Good body shot as well, and that was Jacob's round. And he walks back to the corner, looking more sprightly and a little more encouraged. There we are, Mickey Duff again, reading it to perfection. You let him back in a little bit in that round, that's right. There's Denny Mancini. Breathing heavily in the corner, Mackenzie. Hard work in there. Mackenzie's enough of a pro, though, to know what he has to do. Good jabs from him there. You can see them rocking back the head of Thierry Jacob. Eye is just starting, just starting to close up a little as well, as if he didn't have enough problems, Jacob. Eleventh round. Just two to go. Hope you're enjoying this one at home. And now there's something loose by the glove of Jacob, and this time the referee is going to halt the proceedings to make sure that doesn't flap around. That's absolutely right. It's a bit infuriating when the fight has to be stopped like that, but, um, well, the reasons are crystal clear, aren't they? So Mackenzie gets a few more seconds rest, so too does Jacob. Back they get to work. a bit more lively now though is Jacob and that's good work from him
way I've seen this so far, I don't know if you agree with me, the first six rounds or so were pretty even, Stephen. McKenzie took control about the seventh, eighth, ninth. Now Jacob's coming back into it a bit. Frenchman looking for a grandstand finale. Realising, I'm sure, that he may just have to do a little bit. Still, if he wants to claw back what might be a narrow points disadvantage at this stage. Those cuts do look very, very ugly, don't they? That one particularly above the right eye. Looks quite a deep one too. Oh, that's a good right from McKenzie. But what courage, what bravery from Jacob as he comes back. And McKenzie bent over the rope. And McKenzie must have thought a round or two ago that he was in control. Boxing neatly, but now Jacob really starting to trade with him again and starting to let go with the punches. And McKenzie being caught to the head and not now too much coming back from the British boxer. So this is a turnaround. McKenzie on the ropes there. What did the referee call him away for then? That was very hard to understand. What was going on there? McKenzie didn't go down. Well, there's no doubt about it. Jacob should have been allowed to continue with the assault there. Very, very strange. Saw Jacob getting a sneak little punch there. This referee actually is a little bit fussy. Too fussy. That's good work again. Crashing right from Jacob, then another one. Big round for him. Best yet for the Frenchman. And McKenzie's looking a bit uncomfortable. He's on his bike. He's not throwing much leather himself, is he? And now he's taking a bit of a pummeling, McKenzie. And these are dangerous moments. So, Thierry Jacob, the 25-year-old Frenchman, coming back and coming back big in round 11. Now what does the referee want to stop it for? I think the corner were too noisy for him that time. I don't know what Jacob's playing at there, but a showboating from him. Oh, and then digging in the left, catching McKenzie on the way in. He kind of invited McKenzie in and hit him with a very good left as he took up that invitation. Oh, Jacob looks a far more confident fighter now. Astonishing turnaround in the last couple of rounds. Jacob looking cut, demoralised, on his way to defeat, has staged two remarkable rounds, particularly that 11th, which he won in a big way. Hardly anything back from McKenzie. So this is a different fight now. It must still be close. It could all depend on what happens in this 12th round. Over to McKenzie's corner. What are they saying? Jacob there is standing in the corner. Well, there's a little sign of bravado. Referee says, are you OK? Yeah, of course I'm OK. Reminds me of a story with Marvin Hagler in that great fight with Tommy Hearns. The referee says, uh, can you see all right? And Hagler said, well, I ain't missing, am I? And he certainly wasn't that night. Jacobs hasn't been missing much in the last couple of rounds. Last round then. And McKenzie definitely needs to hold his own in this one because Jacobs got right back into it in the last couple. And I would say that 11th round was as big as either boxer has won any round in the fight. And it was the Frenchman, of course, who took it. Fascinating, of course, to be able to have a little look over the shoulders of the judges. Look at that from McKenzie. It's almost to say to the crowd, I'm not uh, put off by all your chanting. I've got my job to do in here. Still that loose little bit of bandage by McKenzie's right glove. Too late, really, I suppose, to worry about that now. Well, 
Well, it's been a bit of a lackadaisical performance by McKenzie, and he's caught by a left hook. I was saying he'd lost his way in the last couple of rounds. Now that could be vital. He goes down from a left hook in the final round. He'd been tiring a bit down the home straight. Now that may have a decisive effect on the scoring because it may mean that this last round will be scored 10 points to 8 to Jacob, which is the effect of winning two rounds in one. Because usually rounds are scored 10 points to the winner, 9 to the loser. Well, that's a bonus for Jacob. I don't know, Mackenzie, in these last couple of rounds, the feeling is that he's let things slip rather badly. He's not thrown out very much at all himself. He's starting to look a little bit bemused in there. The timing's gone, and the confident control that he'd assumed around the time of the eighth round has evaporated. French crowd are on their feet now. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe brave judges who give the fight against him in his hometown in this situation. Slightly intimidating for the judges. Um, maybe if they did give it to McKenzie, they'd feel as if they needed a trap door that took them into a tunnel that led up in Tristan de Kooner or something like that. And there goes the bell to end it. Jacob obviously feels he's got the decision, throws his arms up. Mackenzie goes into no such bravado. And the decisive moment in that fight may well have come in this last round. Now have a look at this again. Closish fight going into the 12th round. That left hook. And down goes Mackenzie. And that round, I think, would have had to be scored 10 points to 8 to Jacob. Now, let's hear the decision. one one eight to one one three to Jacob is the first scoring. The second one, one one seven to one one three to Jacob, so Jacob has won this. And the third, 119 to 114, a unanimous, if in my view, slightly lopsided points decision to Thierry Jacob, who wins the European Bantamweight title after a dramatic fight, coming back from cut, scoring that last round knockdown. He's the champion. Hope you enjoyed it. From Calais, goodbye.